uh, the, uh, the census is long in terms of the numbers of questions. Of course, not everyone got asked all of the questions uh, for 1950. Uh, I'm going to just show you a few places that the census happens to be right now. And I'm going to show you something incredibly ambitious. This whole thing is supposed to be indexed by the end of June. Wow. Oh. I, I, I think it might happen. Currently, I can tell you for sure, for, for very sure, that the American Samoa Territory and the state of Vermont are totally indexed right now. They've been done since this last week. And there's another state that uh, is very, very close. So with that, I'm gonna go over to the share screen and we'll get started with a very brief overview of where you can find these sweet little things and what they look like. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to here and I'm going to actually go up to here and the slideshow from the beginning. And I'm gonna wipe this out, I hope. And I'll go back a little bit. What's available right now in the US Census? Hopefully you can all see this. If some of you can't, you need to let me know. Uh, getting to the goodies. The easiest way, if nothing else, if you're familiar with Google, is just go out to the top bar in, in Google search engine and put in 1950 U period S period census. Its actual address is right in front of you right now www.archives.gov and you will pull up the search screen and the resources will also be on the right. It's just that simple. Let me talk a little bit about how great this is. 10 years ago, when we wanted the census, we had, first of all, the US archives, the only thing it did is it put up a list of purchase of purchases for each ED and you had to buy them for I believe like $56 a micro uh, film. And so that's what's really changed. The US government in partnership with familysearch.org and ancestry.com have been working on the 1950 census for the last several years to get it in shape uh, for the wonderful way in which it came out last week. Uh, by that, uh, they used artificial intelligence as a means to begin to give people at least an idea of where their families would be. This time in the census, the enumeration district maps for your place of the 1950 US census, they're available several places, not only here at www.archives.gov, but they're also available other places. I found them three or four places today. Uh, and so that's very, very nice to be able to look at a map and approximate where your family or your particular ancestors might've been living 72 years ago. So you pull up the research screen, the search screen, and the resources are also on the right. The site features what's included on this site, and this is all out of that government uh, place. I just can't believe it. It's, it's just very, very well done, I think. Um, let's see. Oh, it doesn't want to do that. Let's see, can I? All right, there's approximately 6.557 million population schedules. Each population schedule is uh, enumerated separately. There's 33, over 33,000 Indian reservation schedules. Uh, there's over 9,000 ED district map 
images available. And this actually, the, the ED maps are really courtesy of a couple of fantastic groups of volunteers who have been working for the last four years to make sure those district maps are up and they're good, pretty good quality. There's 234,000 and more than that actually, ED descriptions, and some of them are pretty neat, especially in the rural areas. I'll show you one of those in just a minute. And we have location and name-based search capability. You can explore those records right now, even if, you, even if your name doesn't come up that you want. You can explore them by the state, by the county and city, by name, by reservation, and by ED district. And that right now there's name transcription capabilities. And you can use a built-in transcription feature right on the page to correct and add names to the name index. And if you want to, you can even do more than that. You can actually volunteer right at that site to help get this thing indexed because that's who's doing it, folks. It's us, it's volunteers. So this is what it looks like when you go into the official 1950 census website to begin the search. Uh, nice patriotic colors here at the National Archives and hopefully that's what you're looking at. So you would push the button to begin search or if you were just looking at the resources, you could do that. Under resources, there's frequently asked questions there's a copy, not a great picture of it, of the 1950 census forms. If you want some nice forms, I've got them here in the library. Or if you email me, I can also email you a nice site uh, where you can get a copy, a blank copy of the 1950 census form. And also you'll get the capability if you want that form uh, to be a form in which you just fill names in. It, that's also there. And that's courtesy of Family Tree Magazine. They've also come in with a nice freebie for us. There's instructions for the enumerators from 72 years ago and for the public. There's ED district maps there, but each and every time you look, look out at a particular area, you're gonna find the district maps if you want them. There's the original census information and training videos for geeks like me who are researchers. Uh, there's the statistical data and all the different reports that came out of the 1950 census for the uh, for Congress. Remember, that's who this is for, initially at least. The finding aids and then all of the Native Americans. This is what a search form looks like out at that archive site and also uh, out many other places. Although this is, I still think, I, I think this is the clearest one. You can put in the location, but you can just select the state, then you can select the county or the city in the case of uh, someone like Linda Long, who's looking at Chicago. You can put in a first or a last name, but here's what I advise, put in the last name and then comma, and then the first name. And you can also put in, if you want to, you can just explore it by ED district. If you know the ED district, but you didn't find your family right away, the name wouldn't pop up, then you can explore it by ED district and here's how. Uh, you can search for the last and the first names. I put my dad's name up here, Lee Byron. Uh, it came right up, but that doesn't mean yours will. My dad's name came up, I know, because somebody used very, very nice legible print. Uh, the search engine says it may bring up spelling variants. Yeah, I'm not too sure of that. After looking at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L -L versus M-I-C-H-E-L, and it wouldn't bring up M-I-T-C-H-E-L. If your surname comes up, what you're going to click on is this little button down over in the right corner called Population Schedule. That's where you're going to find the information. Voila. And you can use the transcription feature to make a needed correction if you wish. And those of us who, after we get done with our work next week, plan to transcribe, I hope to help a bunch. We've already had a couple of our members help a whole bunch with transcribing and uh, also just making corrections. 
Good for them. Well, here I am. In the 1950 census for Ferndale, which is a little crossroads area in Lake County, Montana, here's my dad, Byron R. Lee, as the, uh, R. Lee, as the head. He was born in Montana. My mom, Inez G., was born in North Dakota. My, br my oldest brother, Con, was 13 and just graduating from the eighth grade. Gary B. was 10, uh, but almost 11. Michael D. was eight. My sister, Mary, but we really call her Susie. She was six. And there I am. I'm Janet D. I'm three years old. And I'm going to be four in about a month at that point. That was on uh, April 15, 1950. I want you to notice the descriptor at the top, because this is what I was able to pull. The descriptor is very, very neat. It says, proceeding west on County Road from a point one mile north of Ferndale store to the intersection with Ferndale Road. And it started at Moen's Cattle Guard. Moen's Cattle Guard was almost right on Swan River. And it was the first place. It was the last place down that road, actually. So they started coming back up that road. And ironically, by the way, the, the place where I am, uh, I'm only one block away from my, gra my grandparents, Oscar and Mary Lee, but they are in Lake County. Our family is in Flathead and this little community is split right down the center of Highway 83 today. If you don't know the ED number, you can click on ED maps and you'll get a particular ED map. All you have to do is, is specify where it is, the state and the county, and it will bring up the ED maps so that you can look at them. I'm showing you uh, Maricopa County in Arizona here and, and just a little part of Phoenix. It, when it only covers part, there might be eight or 10 maps there, but you can look and you can see where people are. Or if you only know the ED, the enumeration district, you can still search. This one is that same thing. This is ED 15-2 in Arizona. The county is Phoenix. Or well, the county is Maricopa with the town of Phoenix. And notice it says there's 58 pages. Now, all I have to do to look at that 58 pages is go down to the right-hand corner and hit the population schedule and they will come up like this. They'll start with the overall uh, view of who all looked at this particular ED, this enumeration district, who was in charge of it, who was the boss, who were the enumerators, and then it just starts out with the pages and allows you to go through, if you notice down at the bottom, for one through 58 pages to be able to find things. Hopefully, by the time we get it indexed, you won't see this too often, but sometimes you'll still see it because even in the indexing, remember, people make mistakes. Okay, so that's enough about that particular site. Uh, that's the actual National Archives, the NARA site. It's just called archives.gov and very easy to use. At Ancestry, Ancestry was part of this big effort. So... Uh, you can see that over at the right sidebar, right when you bring up Ancestry, you get, a, there is a redirect there for all kinds of censuses, and it redirects you to the 1950 census and all of the others. And here's the notice that it says here, it says Ancestry is currently indexing the 1950 census. You can try searching below to see if your family is ready to find or explore the maps in our 1950 census district finder experience. So they're not mentioning too much about who managed to put these things together or whatever, but they have been in there with their engineers helping with that AI. And at their area right now, you can explore the maps and you can, you can find some things and find out more about uh, the US census there. And some people have had some luck there. Over at MyHeritage, you need to go to the research bar at the top right and select census and voter lists. And this is what comes up. 
It says that the 1950 U.S. federal census images are free and they're new in their collection. They have 234,000 records describing 6 million images, six and a half million. And they're gonna be proud to bring you the 1950 US federal census free of charge. That's interesting. I don't know that Ancestry necessarily is going to bring it free of charge, but this particular site is. The images are already available, it says on our site. Searching for people by name will be possible a few days after April 1, as we build a robust and complete search index for the 1950 census this new index will be completed by the end of June 2022. So they're the ones who have set this deadline of by the end of June 2022. Uh, we'll see how close that comes. And if they're doing, if Ancestry is doing their index separately, as they did with the 1940 census, or if they're together with the archives.gov and the my heritage experience that you're seeing here. If you need help, let us know. There's a, a bunch of us who have been working with it. And I'll tell you, I'm positively delighted, as Cheryl will tell you, I'm delighted to get to work with the 1950 census. There's a whole bunch of questions uh, in that 1950 census. I showed you hardly anything there. And every fifth person listed in the census got queried for more answers. Well, because they skip a line right at the beginning, then my mom was number 21, and that's in one of the five, fifth, uh, fifth person position, and I was number 26, and that's a fifth person uh, position. Uh, I was only three, almost four, so not much applied, uh, but looking at my mom, the stuff on World War I, World War II uh, didn't apply for her either, but there were some other neat responses there telling a little bit about uh, where her father came from in Norway uh, and where her other uh, parents were born. And so there's a lot of good information here. I'm having a good time every day. I don't get out to the census too much because I'm afraid I'll just bury myself in it. But I have gotten through uh, I've gotten through three of four generations so far of people that, uh, let's just say there's two and a half generations that were available for sure. I've got my suspicions about at least one more great grandmother that probably was there and I just haven't found her yet. But let us know, we're happy to help, uh, happy to work with this. Uh, it's really a fun thing to be able to do. I'll stop the screen share.